Before that, I'll just go into some more gory details about the math. This is not to scare you, but just to make you more comfortable that you can actually deal with something which is not very uh, straightforward or very neat as compared to what you have seen so far. So I just go back to the formula which I had for computing the gradient of the loss function with respect to W. And I cannot repeat enough times that all these notations are actually a bit of abuse of notation because these are gradients and not partial derivatives. So I should actually be using this notation, but for ease of uh, explanation I use, I stick to my original notations. Okay. Okay. So now let us look at each of these quantities here and tell me the dimensions of these quantities. Let us start with the left hand side. What is the dimension of this? W was what matrix? What is, I am not talking about the circled entity, what is the magnet, what is the dimension of that? K cross D. D cross D. Someone N cross D. N cross D and N cross K are the two options which are left. W is the recurrent weight. So W is what dimension? D cross D. So what is this gradient? D cross D. Okay. What about this? Fast. ST was the hidden representation. So that was D dimensional. So what is this? D cross 1. Okay. What about this? Why do you guys still struggle with this? D cross D and this D cross D cross it is very straightforward right what is the dimension of the numerator what is the dimension of the denominator that is all right. So you see the kind of multiplication that you are doing here so you have D cross D 1 cross D D cross D and then D cross D cross D okay. Let us look at each of these quantities and see if you are actually comfortable in implementing these. Are you comfortable with this the loss function with respect to the hidden representation we have done this enough times in back propagation. What about this? We just saw a formula for this, right? So we know how to compute this quantity. We have seen this in back propagation. This is the derivative of a scalar with respect to a vector, and we are very comfortable in computing this. This was slightly tricky, but we just derived this formula on the previous slides. Everyone okay with that? Okay. What about this? This is a tensor. How do we co compute this tensor? What's our standard recipe? Focus on the little guys one element of this tensor and then you can generalize from there right. So this is a tensor and we will just see that this is just to make you all comfortable right? this is not like just to intimidate you with all these uh, large size tensors but I am just trying to show that this is all easy this is not hard okay. So how do we compute this all the other terms are covered this is the only one that we do not know. So we will just look at one element of this tensor and it is going to be SKP by WQR. So let us just see that you have SK as this vector and you have W as this matrix. So I am considering one such weight which is WP comma Q and one such element from here which is SK sorry so QR and I am considering one element from this which is SKP. So I am kind of trying to compute the derivative of one element of the vector with respect to one element of the matrix. So this is going to give me one entry in my tensor and that en entry is going to be what PQR. How many of you are fine with this? Okay, fine. So now recall that AK was equal to W into SK minus 1 plus B and SK was sigmoid of AK. I think again I have missed that U into XK but that will not mat matter because that is not there in the derivative. Okay. You are fine with so far? So now let us look at this because the other two terms do not matter. So I will just look at AK is equal to W into SK minus 1. So this is the matrix way of writing it. Okay. Now I am looking at one of these elements which actually comes from the multiplication of a row and a column, the highlighted row and the column. Everyone gets this? Okay. Now so I can write it as AKP is actually equal to this summation which is nothing but the dot product of this row with this column. Okay. Now SKP is just the sigmoid of that. So now if I want to compute SKP with respect to WQR, I can just write the chain rule that SKP with respect to AKP which is straightforward and then AKP with respect to WQR and I already have a formula for AKP. How many of you are fine so far? Please raise your hands high up. 
if you are fine ok. So, what is the first term going to be sigma sigma prime of a k p and what is the second term going to be this is what the second term is. Now, what this is this is a lot of terms here which of these terms would actually remain only the ones where only the terms where i is equal to r and p is equal to q. So, only that term will remain in that case it would just be this right and in the other cases going to be 0 right. So, now you have one element of this tensor and you have it as a very generic formula you can just fill in all the elements of the tensor right. So, what does this tensor look like it is a very sparse tensor right that is all I wanted to convey ok. So, this is uh, again the same thing right is that fine. So, even though it is a nasty looking tensor if you just break it down to one element it is going to be very easy and now from this element you can just reconstruct the entire tensor do not worry I am not going to ask you to implement this, but if someone were to maybe at some point then you should be able to do it right. So, that is where we will end today. So, we have finished uh, recurrent neural networks and uh, the next thing that we are going to look at is uh, LSTMs and gated recurrent neural networks ok. Thank you.